Hey guys, Savio King here for Hacking SAP and Interdops. Well, this is another video about SAP Analytics Cloud, of course. A lot is happening in, in the SAC space recently, so uh, time to do another video. And, and this time I'm going to talk about a feature that's especially useful for administrators of SAC. So in wave 17 of 2018, SAP delivered a couple of components in the tooling, which uh, allows us to, to get more insights in how the tool is set up and even more important, how the tool is being used by the users. So as you can already see around my screen, so this is my start page in SAC and I put in this, uh, this tile of a chart which contains uh, the new unique users and the number of store reviews on a daily basis. So later on in the video, I will show you as well how you can create this yourself. But this is already pretty useful for an admin of an SAC tenant um, to get a bit of an insight how the, the platform is being used on the on daily basis. So you can see trends. And from here, you can go into a report with way more information about the platform. So let, let's start at the beginning. What was the issue here? Um, the issue was that it took quite some workarounds to get information about the usage out of the system. So we had an option here in the menu, in the security menu called activities. And in activities, as you can see, that's me. Um, all actions of users on the platform are locked. So as you can see here, for example, in this story, my account did a read activity, which was suc successful and had a certain timestamp. So this information has been available for a long time in SSC. And uh, we also had the option to, to filter in here. For example, you could filter only uh, read activities, but there's also something um, for logging in, uh, deletions, creations, updates of objects. Well, those objects, you can also uh, select those. For example, uh, a story, and that's of course interesting, uh, but also models you can see activity information and you can also filter them by the username or even the object name uh, which is the name of the story or the model and then you had to download this into a csv file which you then could well uh, analyze with, with a tool like excel or you could even upload it of course in sec itself again but as you can imagine this is quite a, a manual yeah, activity and you also had to do a bit of cleansing of, of the data so it, it, it didn't really work out that well um, in addition if you wanted to see some information about your users you had to go to the user menu see for each user individually which roles uh, he was assigned to and the same uh, is for the teams so you had to go into a team to see which users are assigned to a team well what SAP did they brought in uh, a sample story and a sample, uh, a couple of sample models, which you can install from within the SEC environment, which already um, gives you the access to all that data from a normal SEC story. So let's let's first have a look on how we can install these uh, built-in models. So you have to go to your browser and go to the files. And from here, you can go to this menu called the content library on the left side. Well, here you can find business content and third party business content, but also some samples. Well, I'm not sure why they put it in the, in the samples. Um, but anyway, uh, here you can find the, the best run juice company and the GF tech samples. But now they also added this SP analytics cloud usage tracking content. Um, library in here. So if you, if you click this, you get a bit of an information about what's coming in in this package. And the most important part of it is, of course, the models, because that gives you the access to the data. Here we see the content that's included. So there's a sample story with some examples. Well, we'll have a look at that in a couple of minutes. And we have the four models. So you can just hit pop, uh, just hit import here, 
and then this content will be uh, imported on your platform. So there's one more thing you need to do um, before you can use the data from these models. You have to make sure that in your roles, uh, people who you want to have access to this data have uh, read writes on the activity option. So if I go to uh, my admin role, for example, here, then you have to make sure that here for the activity log, the read writes, they are checked. If you don't check this, then you won't have access to the data. And well, then you cannot run the repo, of course. So let's, let's have a look here. Um, and for that, I'm gonna go to my sample story that I installed from uh, the, the content. And this sample story uh, just gives a couple of, well, samples on, on what you can do with the data. So for example, you can see um, the number of stories that you have on the platform, but also how many views there were on those stories, uh, stories created by users, uh, stories in certain folders you can check. And of course, who are the most uh, popular stories that you have on the platform. And as you can see here below, you see also a dimension called last access time. Well, this one is pretty old, over two years already. So this could be an indication of old files that, that you could clean up, for example. Um, well, that, that's extremely useful for admins to, uh, to keep the platform clean. Furthermore, in the sample story, we have yeah, comparable information about the models. And also here you can see uh, which models are being used in stories, for example. And we have a tab on user information. So you see how many of uh, who are the most, uh, the users that log in the most of the times, um, with, with the most activities, and your active users over time, so on a daily basis, who is using the platform. Well, this is all just example. Of course, you're gonna create your own reports in here, just like I did here with the platform usage chart that you already saw on my homepage. But before we go into that, uh, I need to show you the, the, the four models that we have available. So if we go to data in our story, then we can explore the, the four models. So as you can see, those are the models that we have. And I think the most important ones are the usage activities and usage uh, users models. So those two are the most important ones with the most useful data. So the activity one, that's uh, basically the activities table that we had here in the security menu. So let's, for example, add a couple of uh, dimensions here in, in the table, uh, object type. What else do we have? Uh, description. Let's also use status. And of course I need a dimension, uh, a measure of course here. So let's pick um, count of activities. And let's make this a table. So then can show you what, what you can expect here in this uh, in this report. Uh, so for example, let's say we want to see um, information about uh, a story. Then we have to go to the object type here, filter on the story. And as you can see, there are four different activities here. Uh, let's say I'm interested in, in the usage of a story. So I'm only going for the read activities that you can see on this platform, we have 4,055 uh, times that a story has been read by a user. Well, let's say I'm also interested in who is reading those stories. Then I can also uh, add the user ID in here. So you see those are our users on the platform and you can see for each user how many times um, 
this user read a story. Well, there's also a status I shouldn't forget. So we only are interested in successful reads. So you can also filter on this one. And as you can see here, we also have the time dimensions. So we can also put in the year or the uh, week or the day, etc. So on all these objects, uh, so we can do this on models, on, on uh, dimensions, uh, allocation steps, if you use planning, uh, teams. So all the, the activities that you can do on the platform, they are logged in here. Uh, it stops at, at uh, object level, so it doesn't go into a story, for example. So you cannot see if somebody went to the second page of, of a certain story. So, so it's not logged on, a, on that detail. Um, but at least you can see yeah, what people are doing uh, with, with their stories and models on, on the platform. So that's an interesting model in here. So the other one that I found interesting is the one about the users. So here we can see who is part of a certain role or a certain team. And we can also see the details of uh, certain users. So let's add this measure here. And we're gonna use a table again. And let's say I'm gonna pick my own uh, account. So let's filter on myself. And well, Let's add all these dimensions in here. So you can see, I now have all the user information for myself. I can also add uh, the roles that I'm in. So I'm apparently a BI admin in this one. I'm in the team interdops. This is my user ID for this platform. Oh. So the other two models, they are about files and uh, the location of the files and type of files. So this one is called uh, usage files and the other one is other objects. So you can use this to determine what are dependencies or relations between objects on your platform. Well, for now, I want to look at only uh, the activities. So I'm going back to the story mode here. And we're going to have a look at this, um, well, this overview here. And as you can see, I created a, a chart with story views and the number of unique users. And with this, you can follow how um, usage on the platform is improving or decreasing over time. So how can I now do this? Um, well, I'm using this usage activities model that we just saw. And in here, I created a couple of custom measures. So starting with the story views, which are the bars here. I created a calculation that's a restricted measure of uh, count of activities filtered on these three dimensions. So I'm only looking at activities for um, read activities for the object type story, which have a state of status of success. So I'm only interested in these activities on the platform. And those are shown per date on a daily basis. Here. So for the unique users, I'm using two custom measures actually. So let's first have a look at the final ones, the unique users. So if I go to edit calculation here, you can see I created another restricted measure on a, a measure called unique users total. So that's another one that I created. But again, the dimension filters on these three dimensions, uh, the same one as in the other measure. And also let's have a look at the unique users total. Which I'm using for this. So this is, oh, this is a count dimension. Um, 
which is counting all the unique user IDs. And I added the, the, the secondary measure on top of this, just to make sure that I'm only fetching users that did read uh, a story successfully. So if a user would have just logged in and edited a model or something, then I don't want to count that user in this report. So that's why I did it in two steps here. So let's remove that again. And finally, I put in a timestamp filter, which is dynamic. So I set a dynamic uh, date range for this timestamp. So I'm always looking back for, uh, for five weeks in this case. So I don't have to adjust the date selections anymore uh, manually. And finally, I uh, pinned this tile or this widget, widget to my homepage. And that's why it pops up at the start page of As You See. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to set it up. You just have to install the content from the samples. Then you have the four models. Well, you can play around a bit with the data to see what's available in here. Um, yeah, you have to, to create your own um, specific measures if you want to do certain things. But I think that the sample model also has quite some uh, examples already that, that you can learn from and have a look at. Yeah, so I think it's a great addition to SAP Analytics Cloud. Uh, it will give us a lot of insights in the platform, uh, the way it has been set up and the way people are using it. Um, yeah, so it's definitely, definitely a, a good addition uh, to the tooling. So let me know what you think about it and how you are going to use this in your environment. So see you next time. Bye bye.